Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I've been up to my old tricks again. Uh, spending time on eBay, looking at things I don't need. And this came my way. It's an old, relatively old, Barford with an enamel badge. A Barford cement mixer or concrete mixer. The Villiers engine. I was looking at Villiers engines because I had posted a video or made a video, maybe not posted it recently, of my Colwood lawn tractor, which has a Villiers engine. And I was looking at Villiers engines. This came up and I thought, you don't see cement mixers for 50 quid every day. So I put a bid on it and nobody else bid against it. And 50 quid was 50 quid and that's what it went for. It's obviously seen better days, but it doesn't seem to be too bad for its age. I'm guessing it's 40 to 50 years old, that kind of age. It's a guess completely. It's missing a foot here, so it's up on blocks. The foot is somewhere around, but it's completely rusted. There's the foot. Uh, it's got different wheels on it, but they seem to be just wheelbarrow wheels. And it's got a linkage there for uh, moving it. I, I guess you could hook it onto some kind of a sight wagon or something like that. But that's been laying on the ground, I'd say, and it's gotten rusty. So you could pull it by hand anyways. And it was pulled out of the garden that it was in and the tires hold air for a day or two. I think this one's okay, but the other one is just a day or two and it's pretty rotten. But I think I have some spare wheelbarrow wheels as well. I'm not too worried about that. Um, oh, the other cool thing, this, uh, this mounting, you should just be able to unscrew them by hand, but that's just completely seized. So the bar should slide out, shouldn't have to take out the four big bolts. It's quite a, you know, demountable little unit. And when it's, so when it's set up, it's ready to go. What I like about it is, if we hold it like this, maybe you can see, if I reach out my arm, I'm just turning the engine over by hand. And it's got compression, I feel it going there over compression. It's turning, it's all turning, the barrel's turning, the reduction gear's turning. So I think it's got a reduction gearbox here, a little one, oil filled probably, and then another reduction gear on the chain here. It's got grease points, screw down grease cups on the main bearings here. And those bearings don't really do much turning. They just take the weight of it. This is the bearing that does all the work. If I go around and have a look inside in a minute, you'll see what I mean. It's not like modern cement mixers. It's a huge bearing by modern cement mixer standards. And uh, over here, this side, if I lift up this guy and turn it this way, it spins the opposite way, as it were. So in fact, I'll just turn this over so we can have a look inside it like that and I'll lock it up for safety or something it's all made out of quite substantial like that's a solid piece of mild steel and that looks like a housing for the, the gears I can't see them in there that looks like a you know a solid welded up housing but the issue is that some bits of it are not so solid anymore because of how it was lying some bits got wet it looks to have had an isopon or something could be could be cement but it looks more like car body fillers that have flaked over time but the inside of the drum as concrete mixers go pretty immaculate for its age now i could hit those and paddles could fall off i guess but they haven't fallen off so far i'm not sure what the isopon is about because it could be worn thin i guess but I think as it goes, it's like feeling it. It's relatively thick compared to a modern bell mixer. I could just be feeling the concrete, could I? And this is the bearing on the inside. So look at that huge bearing. So there must be a shaft run through that probably with a bearing on each end, uh, concreted in. But those nuts all look, if they're covered in concrete, they're probably okay to come out. I don't know if I'll ever touch them. If I can get the grease cup off and get some grease into it, I'm not even worried about it. I'm not sure what I want it for. I'm not sure that I need it. I had a bell cement mixer before, an Ultrad Bell standard 150 mil, 150 liter um, mixer, the one that seems to be ubiquitous in the UK and Ireland. I uh, bought it, I don't know, nine years ago, eight years ago for 300 quid and sold it after I'd used it for four years for 300 quid. And they're up to 500 quid now new or 400 or some price like that. They go up in money all the time and the secondhand ones seem to hold their value remarkably well. This I was told was bought 25 years ago, something like that. My numbers aren't great. 
and it was bought for £90, maybe longer ago. It was bought second hand for £90 and I've paid 50 so your man, he's done a lot of work with it apparently and it hasn't lost any money. One of the things I've noticed, it was probably lying with the drum down, which is the way you'd do it. Proper welded drum there, look at that, big welds on it. Um, you can see on each side, over there as well, you can't see it from here, this is quite rusty in here. Structurally, I think the machine is okay above above the waist, if that's the waist. So I think if I had a couple of channel irons or something like that, you could make up a new chassis for it, or even, like I've got angle irons I could probably chop up. Don't know if I will, not sure what I'm doing with it yet. As it stands, everything's here as a pattern, which is cool. Uh, what I was thinking was, if I can get the engine running, I could see if it fits the other machine. I don't know if I want that, <laughs> really. I don't know if I want. I don't know if I don't know if it'll fit, and I don't know if I want it to. Um, that's all free in there. Like, look at the cobwebs. I haven't. I wanted to film it because I didn't want to lose the the cobwebness. It's missing its air cleaner bowl. There should be like a plastic clip-on thing underneath there to catch this co these cobwebs and insects before they go in. Um, it looks to be the original exhaust, but it's all like. A credit to the guys. Someone scraped something off there quite recently, I'd say. I wonder what that was. I don't know. Maybe not recently. It's got a lever to hold it up there, a bracket, or a, lever, a bracket arm to hold it up. I'm not, not going to do this with one hand because it's heavy. Barford of Belton Limited, Grantham in Lincolnshire, is that right? Building plant. If that's an enamel, an enamel plate. That's kind of sweet. The fact that it's still on it and still there. Seems to have had a number of colours on it. Green, orange, blue, I'm guessing depending on who was painting it at what time. And uh, concrete wash. Now, let's give this a clean. It's a 10-1 Villiers, so Mark 10, which is the same as the other one that I have. Um, and it spins over nice and freely. It has an ancient, like remarkably ancient lodge plug in it. I think, I don't know if that's a two-part, it doesn't look like a two-part plug. Oh god, look at all these webs. That, they're, they're quite thick. Look at that, it's proper Halloween stuff. Um, look at that, that's amazing. Yikes. Let's see if we can get it in here. Oh dear, that's not gonna, that's gonna take a bit of persuasion. Yeah, so what'll I do? I'll put the tripod on. I might, can I remove this thing? Is that easy? See, the thing is, if you start taking anything off, the metal's going to come with it, I think. I suspect you can put a padlock on there to hold that shut so people can't... Oh no, it's just got a little split pin, which has seen better days. I might take that... I don't know if I take it off, will I put it back on? It's tricky. I guess you're supposed to run it, actually, with the cover up so that the exhaust can vent, because otherwise the exhaust's just going to blow off the side in, in there, roughly. Probably where that rust... No, that's, that's the back of the plate. That's from a metal reaction off the plate, I'd say. Um, we need to get into that tank and have a look. Wouldn't mind having a look at the spark plug. I could put a bit of rope on it and see. Once I've taken the plug out, I'll see if it if it uh, sparks. Spark and fuel. That, like everything's quite good. The choke there is loose, but it does turn underneath. I had a look. If we can see in there does turn the plate so you could hold it to put it on it should have it should have this thing that's like a perspex plasticky kind of cup which may have gotten broken or isn't there one way or the other that's that's that nothing nothing for it spiders galore but it looks it looks in remarkably kind of original good nick it hasn't been kept indoors it's been outside in manchester for years now, I was told it ran five years ago, and if it did, I presume those cobwebs are only five years old. Um, I can't doubt that, if that's what I was told. And it looks to have been well lubricated, at least at this point. So, I'll put the camera up on a tripod, and we'll see if we can get a spark, and see if we can get anything out of it. If it does, then there's not much for it, really. See how it goes. So, let's have a look in here. Good. 
brace. There we go, quarter turn. Oh, that seal's a bit knackered. Not too bad. Need a cigarette lighter or something to have a look at it, do we? <laughs> That is pretty remarkable. There's a tiny bit of something residue in the bottom there, but that is, I wouldn't even bother cleaning that, I'd say, or if I do, it won't take very long. That tank is perfect inside. That is just, it's just unreal for a four stroke tank, for a tank on, a, on an engine like this. That's remarkable. Now, so a Lodge spark plug. Lodge didn't make plugs recently, so. That's welded in, right. Yikes, that's 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 well well attached there. It's gonna need a bigger hammer. Okay, what are we up to? Twenty it's twenty it's a one inch a one inch spanner on that, okay. So let it be known that I don't really understand Imperial sizes, 5 8 BS, 9 16 Whitworth. I think it's one inch across faces. Across faces is really all I can consider in these things. Hang on, let's see, is one, one side tighter than the other? Yeah, so it's not, it's not 9 16, it's 5 8, no, 9 16, it's 5 8. So those are the thread sizes, is how old Imperial things, how the old Imperial sizes used to be quoted, I think. Let's see. very tight that plug. It's almost foolish to try to remove it but it's one of these things that it's kind of one of the most basic parts of the machine here isn't it really? A Lodge C3 plug. We had a big selection of Lodge plugs at one point that were all ancient. I sold them I think just as artifacts. They weren't new at all. They were all used and in terms of reliability, they're probably as reliable as anything, but they might have been two part plugs. This is a single part. Mm. I think this is replaced by a. I can't remember which number. A modern plug. It's not bad, it's got a lot of carbon on it, but uh, rich running. Spent a lot of time idling, maybe. Smart mixer. That's pretty rusty in there. Get a string. See if you can't get in there and visit this. disengage for it really so it's actually a really bright spark off that that is just amazing i have a feeling a bit of petrol into that tank won't do any damage i think i'm just going to go for it and give it a half a liter and see what happens it won't it won't hurt at all to clean this up So there was older plugs that had another thread and the electrode could be the, the um, not the electrode, the insulator bit portion could be released by unscrewing this nut here and that would slide out and there was another nut at the bottom or another part to hold it on and you could take it out and give it a real good clean but they stopped making them a few years ago. I say it can't hurt. 
that's just wonderful that that's going in. It's going in very stiff there. Yeah, it's going in okay now. It is, it is quite wonderful that, you know. A bit of contact cleaner or something up there couldn't hurt either, but, uh, well, not today. I don't really want to put too much in in case it leaks out. Oh, it's leaking out of somewhere. Yeah, true enough. There it is, the petrol tap's not great. open maybe that'll stop it I'll put a cup under there I found problem number one the old fuel tap but if it's coming out of the fuel tap it's going to the carburetor it's normally hopefully hopefully the case I hear that dripping away yeah, it's not there's normally a little ring of cork in there which is torture but it is what it is let's just have a look in here I should have checked this earlier perhaps Filthy. That's really filthy. What I can do put that over the wire brush. Do it quick enough, the brush doesn't really come through it. There we go. As clean as I'm going to make it. All right, that's easy out. Good. SA30 straight 30 oil. It's got a dipstick and it's dripping oil on its end there. There's a line on that. Let's see. It's over the line when it's not screwed in, so presumably there's too much oil in it. That fuel is dripping out nice and clean. What might happen over time is that that uh, fuel cock swells up. What can happen with the cork is that the cork inside it that's, that's leaking can swell up. That's dripping out of the carby side as well, look. Uh, you're a bit of a pain, you. I see it dripping there out of the carb side. Put a cup under that. It's splashing a bit, but I could just try and put that rag there to catch it. I might do. Rag soaked in petrol is always useful, isn't it? Right. What do you think? If it does go. Pull itself to bits, I suppose. Better run. It's not going to go anywhere. So. Is that a bit of something coming out of the exhaust? It smells actually pretty, pretty decent. Say there's compression there, I don't know. It looks good. Second pull, it looks like there's something coming out of that exhaust. Coming through it anyways. choke on it of course try putting that on oh, not as keen there
running. <laughs> That's good. That's a start. You can hear that running. <laughs> Maybe one of the easiest engines I've ever, ever come across. I wouldn't say the compression's excellent on it. to stop. I think the fuel is just running straight on through it even with the tap off. You can see it's really flowing there now. If it would come out that side and not out the carb side that would be better. What a little ripper that's just amazing. Wonderful. Like what was that four pulls five pulls 
out for five years and I would genuinely believe that it hasn't been touched from the cobwebs on it. Um, quite remarkable. Warmed up nicely. You saw that after maybe 30 seconds the smoke had gone out of the exhaust, which is sweet as. It turned, it worked just fine. It's quite remarkable. So, a little petcock on there has got an issue. I wouldn't even worry about that. What, my, what I would typically do on something like that, as I do on other engines, is just put one of these cheap fuel tanks with a inline tap and filter on it. And that way it's not, it's not got the same amount of fuel in it, but you can normally just secure it up on top somewhere like that, maybe the other way around. As long as it's clear, it won't, uh, won't interfere with the operation of the lid. I might put a longer thing on there and just tie it in underneath to the, to the carb. You saw that that carburetor didn't care, didn't care a damn if it was getting air or not. It seems like it would just run anyways. I tried to choke it by putting a cloth, like a balled up cloth over it and made no odds. I think here I've noticed uh, this twisted -y, wiry stuff. There should be a mesh blocking blocking that so you can't put your fingers in there but well safety was a different thing back in the day um it would have been relatively safe back in the day but it's just it's just gone missing over time there should be a mesh that spins around so that if you put your fingers it'd probably trim your nails but it wouldn't uh wouldn't chop them off that's just ripping that's class <laughs> so I ran there for five minutes no issue and I would say that that engine as it stands would still run all day no air filter or nothing so what am I gonna do then? Just a bit of attention. Like I'm guessing it was meant to be towed by a vehicle because it wouldn't have mud guards otherwise and it has one little reflector plate on this side and the other one's fallen off but it's on the ground there. So when you when you tilt it down it tilts over a bit, cants over a bit so that the rather than being at you know it comes up by about 10 degrees so those reflectors would be shining backwards or reflecting backwards. You could tow it behind something with a pin. I guess you know something like like something like on an old on an old timey road train you might have something like a scud truck or a dumper truck driving along and it would have a link on the back and it could tow this at you know 10 miles an hour or that kind of speed 8 miles an hour and then there's no real issue you wouldn't want to tow it at motorway speeds you could see it doing all sorts of craziness right it ran i'm kind of I'm really pleasantly surprised. That's that's one of the best stationary engine finds I've ever had. Petcock thing is kind of irrelevant. I'm, like I've said, I'll pass that over. Now, is it worth taking this apart to put it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you get into this limbo now. It's up on a pallet as it stands. That's the way it was delivered to me. The guy who sold it to me, Peter, was just a real gentleman and. Uh, my plan was to take it apart on his driveway and put it in the car, but ultimately he he's, doesn't live that far away and he suggested that he could bring it over in his trailer. So we tipped it over on its side on the pallet and hiked it up into his trailer and he brought it over on the back of his on the back of his trailer. And he lost an hour or two out of his day and I'm all the more all the more impressed by the whole experience. This is just wonderful. So the Barford mixer. If you know anything about what model it is, let me know. I'm sure there's enthusiasts out there for this kind of thing. If, there's, if you know anything about the model, or if you know anything, um, if there's anything that's missing from it that I haven't, I've said the, the filter, the air filter is missing. Presumably I need to check gearbox oil or replace it with some kind of 90 weight or something like that in there. But it's probably never been done and it's working just fine. Like, it's run on that old Lodge spark plug. I, I, I'm really impressed by this. This is it's quite wonderful, you know. It's quite wonderful when something comes together. Those grease cups, I, I'm, I'm not as worried about them. It's the one in the center I should give some attention to. But you saw it spinning, like it wasn't too, too, it wasn't clunking or anything like that. There was no bearing sounds out of it and it wasn't under load. There's no mix in it. This guy looks bent, either hammered on or something, but it doesn't look like it's gonna screw down properly. So I'm pretty sure I can still buy those. Um, can't see the name on it there, but it's a standard, it's about an inch and a half across there. Maybe inch and three quarters. 
it's not loose. Uh, the ones on that, that one over there was loose. This one I didn't get my hand into yet. But uh, even to replace it with a modern style grease nipple, it's not a big deal. Although grease cups on a building site are a lot more practical because you just have a bottle of grease and you just smear a bit in your thumb and give it a go. I thought I saw a greasing point on it somewhere. Oh, maybe there. Is that is that a grease nipple as well? Let's have a look. And you're still watching this video and thinking, is he ever going to wrap it up at all? Or is he just going to talk all day? But he's so pleased with his new toy, <laughs> he could talk all day about it. In fact, it could be a grease nipple there. I'd have to give, that a, give it a little lick of the brush. Say it is i'd say that's a grease nipple there so there's grease there's obviously grease in there so that's a grease nipple and there's the chain looks like it could use a bit of bit of something some kind of love is that a big snot of grease there congealed mucky old grease i'd say it is yeah let's chuck that in there so it needs a new subframe but like what i was thinking was it doesn't have to look like this you know i'm never going to tow it behind a car so the more modern ones have like two wheels on the back and then a, a towing thing on the front that you know you just lead them along like a I don't know like a trolley two 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 wheels on a fixed axle and then a turnable axle on one end that's the way the more modern ones are but equally this is just as maneuverable um I can't see myself freeing that up without it coming asunder it's pretty rotten but that would be the ideal because that's that's quite a useful lever arm your man was selling it for 50 quid because he reckoned that's kind of the scrap value of 30 for the engine and 20 for the thing. I don't know scrap value for the engine, but you probably take the engine off and just get 30 quid for it on eBay. That fuel is all going to come through, but... Oh, what a party. This is great. Right. I've been waffling on for long enough. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.